Hello everyone, welcome to Connected. Once again, we meet here with a new guest and we're going to talk about a new topic. I'm talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. If you are in Bolivia, you can see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but if you are not or if you have somebody that would like to see the show, please let them know that they can see us on Facebook, on Twitter, and also see us on our channel on YouTube. Today's topic is so special to me, not only because we are connecting for the first time with Lebanon, this beautiful country on the Middle East, but also because we're going to talk about a profession which is not very well known, but it is so important for our communities. We are going to talk about a professional clown. Her name is Sabine Chakar and she is in Lebanon. She doesn't only bring joy and laughter anywhere she goes, but she also links her work with a social cause. Sabine visits refugees camps in Lebanon and she brings her street performances and all of her 11 clowns with her in order to connect with people and tell their stories. Before we get to know her work, let's get to know her. Let's meet Sabine Chakar. Sabine is a Lebanese humanitarian clown, storyteller and performer. With qualifications in performing arts from London and social therapy from New York, she has been working with different communities around the world, finding real stories and transposing them on stage or in film. Sabine co-founded Clown Me In in Lebanon and Mexico, a group using the art of clowning to fight social injustice. She is a member of Clowns Without Borders USA, spreading joy and laughter among disadvantaged communities and in refugee camps. Sabine is the artistic director of the Caravan Project, a street theater project in its third edition that takes Syrian refugees' stories to more than 50 communities in Lebanon and Tunisia and soon Europe. She is also the managing director of Beirut Cinema Days Film Festival. Sabine was among the 40 cultural leaders chosen to share their work at the World Economic Forum at Davos in January 2017. Her theater and therapy projects led her to work in many countries such as Lebanon, the United Kingdom, the United States, Brazil, Mexico, India, Canada, Cyprus, Tunisia, Belgium, France, Cameroon, Morocco, Jordan, and Dubai. It is my pleasure today to introduce Sabine Shuker, who is talking to us all the way from Lebanon. Sabine, I am so happy to have you on the show today. Thank you for the time you're taking, and let's go ahead with the first question. So, you are a professional clown. How did you become it? Did you have any influences? Um, so, so I studied theater at the uh, Lebanese University here, and then I went to London to do performing arts, and this is where I really discovered clowning and, uh, and this dreamy, beautiful world. And I thought, this is what I want to do for, for a living and in life. So I decided, you know, I used to be an actress. I decided I'm not going to be an actress anymore. And I'm just going to become a full-time clown. And then what, what, really, what, really, uh, um, what really interested me in, in this world is that it, it's not only about, about being more dreamy and hopeful space, but also how how human uh, clowning is, and 
uh, and how how connected you can be with other people when clowning. So uh, so I thought you know I come at, I come from a from. Uh, from a country where we had war, uh, where as kids we didn't have all these options to live a fun, uh, nor normal life. So, and 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 the, the minute I discovered clowning, I I actually saw life in a very different way, in a more simple way. Um, it made a difference in my life, and I thought, okay, I'm clowning with everybody around either by performing or workshops and working very closely with people using uh, this art right and i see that in order to make it happen there is an ambient that right you develop you create a, an, an ambient so tell me about street performances and um, do they have any relation with healing on people or of any kind Mm -hmm. So, uh, for clowning, I mean, the fact to, to be on the street is, is very, very important for us because we, because I thought instead of just being in a theater and having people come to, to watch me or my group performing, I want to be able to go to them to go beyond the main cities where it happens. I want to go to uh, front lines, to borders, to really far places where we can reach so many people and we can there on the street, which is, which is where most people are, right? We spend a lot of time on the streets, either driving or going from one place to another or just walking around, wandering around. So this is a very important place. So uh, the, deciding to do the performances on, on the street uh, is, very, is, is, is very important because one, we can reach more people, but also it can give people a very nice surprise, like oh, walking and then I see something is happening and then I go, I'm like, what is this? Well, this is something funny, this is something fun, this is, make, this is making me laugh. And at the same time, we always try to uh, approach and, and, and trigger discussions about deep issues that, uh, you know, about social justice, about the environment, so, so it's it's not only having fun, but having fun and having interesting discussions. Uh, so, so this for me is very important. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the therapeutic aspect, and I think laughter by itself is very therapeutic. We all need to lo to laugh. Uh, we anything we want to say, be heard and discuss better if it's said in a in a lighter way than if it's if, if we go oh blah 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 I don't want this and I want that and blah, 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 then people won't won't take in these things but also so so you have this part with, that is very therapeutic very very calm and laughter and how it works on on the muscles of your body and it makes you feel more relaxed but also the 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 aspect of clowning where where we go and work with people on them finding their own clowns is also therapeutic because this is when people just uh, dig more into themselves, think about what they like, what they don't like, except that other people are laughing about things that they don't like about themselves right. and accept that they laugh about these things and see them from a very different perspective and th this is also therapeutic. Right, and especially um, on these special cases since you tell, told us that you live in a war area, right? So in being able to make that connection through laughter that definitely heals the heart. So let's go for the exactly next question which is the project The Caravan. How did it come to life? How does the idea start? Uh, what are the goals? How do you fund it? How do you make it happen? Right. So uh, when I started, when I started 
something in Lebanon that was 12 years ago. I started working a lot with refugees and disadvantaged communities. Um, and then five, six years ago, the Syrian uh, revolution started. And I felt, well, we had 1.8 million refugees coming to our country. And our country is only 5 million people, so it's a very, very small country. Um, so I thought, okay, now we have two, pop two civilizations or two people living together in the same country and they can't, they don't listen well to each other. Um, so um, I've decided what is, what, what's something that would make us more together is if we listen to each other's stories and we understand each other in that sense. So I started going to camps and, and uh, working in different dis disadvantaged communities with disadvantaged communities, real stories that happened to them. And when I say real stories, it's not only stories of, oh, this is how I left Syria or this is what happened to me, but more, more of stories that are very, uh, very, very personal. Not the first story that somebody would tell you that feed you. So I spent three months with groups of teachers and kids and women and men uh, doing social therapy, clowning, storytelling workshops. Uh, and then after they would choose the story they want to tell the world and we would record it. Once we've recorded the stories, we cast, uh, we, did, we auditioned people from the refugee camps as well, and we devised a performance that's a street performance that we performed on the roof of a caravan of a bus and uh, on a platform in front of it, and it was based on the recorded. So far, we've done four productions. Uh, the first one was uh, solely about Syrian refugees stories. The second one were more about child rights and, and going to school, but all based on real stories. And I just came back from based on some immigrants that are coming from different places, from Germany to Sweden, from Denmark to Sweden, from Palestine and uh, Sweden, but also so Swedish people who left to as immigrants right and uh, the whole idea is to put these on the street and to have conversation with host communities and try to, to go to hostile places where people don't necessarily like the immigrants or the refugees which is not hard to find these days everywhere around the world <laughs> sadly true but how do you find all of this? I, I would like to know because I know that there are several people that like you have this, this feeling of what can I do, right? And then you can have so many ideas, but when it comes to the how, and you say, okay, I'm gonna need this, 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 this. So how do you, you know, the, the artistic part is taken care of because you head all of your ideas and you have all the people and the stories and there's something you can do. But when it comes to the uh, being able to actually found it and do it, how do you put it together? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the part that's more uh, <laughs> and time consuming. Nice. Um, when I come up with an idea, I write it down uh, with all its details and I go and, you know, ask who can fund it. So let's say, you know, I for funds online, I go meet people, I go to embassies, I, I go to cultural centers, I go to uh, NGOs that are doing things that have to do with, like, that, that are humanitarian aid and I just I just fundraise, so I go and ask people for money. Um, so so far, so far we've been funded by UNICEF, for example, by the European Union, uh, by the Swiss Embassy, by Goethe Institute, by the British Council. So it's it's a, it's a hard it's a hard uh, thing to do, but 
we have to do it if we want to do what we want to do. We also do some crowdfunding, so we go, we do online, uh, we accept online donations, mm -hmm. and a lot, many of us clowns, we do many of those projects as well as uh, uh, as volunteers because we want to do them because we believe in them. Um, so there are many of those projects that we don't we're not paid for. We choose to do. Right. It is kind of the service that you do in order to help all of these people. I love this story. So, okay, let's go to the other part, to the fun part. You find a new um, camp and you say, okay, we're heading there. And tell us, how does the organization and the creative process happen? How do you put a presentation together? Um, okay, so let's, uh, we've talked about the caravan, now we'll talk about the, the clown shows, uh, what we do mostly uh, as well. So uh, we, as a group, we're, we're 11 clowns, we meet every week, uh, one time per week, sometimes two times, sometimes three times, depends, and we rehearse, we come up with uh, scenes, clown scenes that we think are important, are funny, uh, of course, and uh, and that the themes are important for us. Um, like, for example, in, in Lebanon, we do a lot of things about the garbage because we have a big garbage crisis, right. uh, a lot of things about the environment, a lot of things about hygiene. Uh, so once we have a show, we take our cars, go to a camp, and then we always come inside fully dressed as our own clowns so we never go and change in front of kids we come and leave the same way we like to go anywhere give them one hour of pure joy uh, and uh, and let them dream and have this say oh the clowns came and left so so we come with music with um, you know, sometimes juggling and sometimes doing it on stilts or um, sometimes just with some hoops. And we set the space, we put a big rope, we invite people to come, kids and adults, uh, through a parade, a clown parade. We have a lot of bubbles as well. Uh, we let them sit and we start the show, we do the show. And after the show, we keep playing with the kids and the adults uh, together for some time and then we leave. Um, and we've done this, you know, we've done this in Lebanon so, so many times. Uh, but also, uh, I've been also to Greece, to the Balkans. Um, Clownian, we started it in Mexico. So we've done a lot of work in Mexico and Brazil, uh, we went to India and we always follow the same process of coming, spreading joy, laughter and then leaving. leaving. And that I think is what the what the world needs. Both things, actually the joy is spreading, right? The spreading yeah. laughter but also what you were saying about the storytelling, to be able to make others hear others that sometimes are not so far away from each other. And the, the, the fact that you put both of these things together and you guys are looking like clowns, I just love the idea and I think it's a great social movement what are you guys doing. Sabine, I wanna know more and we're gonna go to a fast cut. We'll be right back with the last question for you. People at home, don't go anywhere, then we're gonna come back with the last question for Sabine. Stay connected. Welcome okay. back everyone and thank you for remaining connected. I am still connected here with Sabine who is talking to us all the way from Lebanon. I am especially happy today, not only because we are connected with uh, a friend so far away, but also because I'm so, I'm thrilled to learn all of their work. Sabine, okay. So tell me a little bit about the feedback you get from these presentations because you don't only engage with the audience, 
but everywhere you go you also engage with new actors or new performers that you know work with you um so we we have different things i i have some quotes from from people who took the workshops with us for example like uh one one girl and hiding behind the red nose gave me confidence. I started doing whatever I wanted without thinking that I was the same rational girl who lived in a closed society uh, in in a camp. That's like so. So it's, it's very, many people think, think that this is very opening for their soul and and their their creativity. Uh, one one said, "Oh, when I wrote, when when I wore my red nose, I felt as if it was as if I was in a different, in another world, which is also really, uh, really nice, right?" Mm -hmm. uh, um, then here, one one other guy said, "Our mission is priceless. I can proudly say that I'm a clown. I'm a person who shares positive vibes and, and laughter. A clown." via storytelling, sharing thoughts, experiences, lessons, and morals. We've brightened up more than 1,000 children's face today. Um, so we've got, we have a lot of, a lot of positive reactions from actually teams who we work with and people who we train. But also when we go to, to camps and we perform, and I mean, I remember one time one little kid came and told me and he was like, he, he said, you know what? You are uh, better, that you are even better than, uh, than, than me spending time playing football. And for me, it was like, <laughs> great, this kid really loves playing football, but, but really thinks that clowns are even better. And of course, when we do the caravan performances and we have the discussions with with people on the streets, we have a different kind of actions that are more more uh, more deep and more deep in, in a sense where they say, oh, okay, now I understand the refugees more or, oh, I didn't know that this was happening uh, or, oh, these stories really hit home. Um, so we've got different reactions, but mostly most of the the reactions are very positive, very heartwarming, and they just they just show us how that or tell us that what we're doing is is right in a way. Right. And and people are getting something positive from from it. Right, because it is such a delicate topic nowadays when like you guys are you guys are receiving like you your your country is receiving this amount of people coming from a different place and you never know how people will react and especially with media that always shows us not a very uh, lovely way right the way how people really are and it's always you know you're listening information but you don't know how to feel and if it comes somebody in a funny way to show you their reality and to show that we are more alike than we think. Sabine, I loved hearing your story and I want to ask you now please to share all of your uh, uh, social media information or if you want to share also your founding place, whatever you want to do and now go ahead and also say a hello to the audience please. Well, hello everyone, and thanks for listening until the end. <laughs> uh, to follow up us, you can find us on www.clownmein.com, mm -hmm. and then it's the same for Twitter uh, at, uh, and Instagram and Facebook. Clown Me In is our team and our group in Lebanon, and then from there. Uh, will take you to all the projects we've talked about here. Thank you so much, Sabine. I will have your information display, of course. I want to wish you well, always, not only for you, but for the 11 clowns that work with you. I hope you're always safe and continue to do and spreading joy and laughter and everything that you guys know best. Mwah! It was a pleasure to have you here today and until next time with me. Thank you. Goodbye. 
After listening to Sabine and the beautiful work she does, I would like to rescue the importance of storytelling. We all do this every day in our lives. What sometimes you get home and the first thing you do is about telling your story and sharing your day with somebody. That right there, it's a moment of connection. And that right there is what makes you closer to people. Having those moments, taking the time to actually listen to somebody and say, how are you feeling? What are you doing? What are your experiences? That moment is when you can connect and realize that we have so much to share and we have so much in common. I will see you again in seven days. If you know anybody in the world that is doing something beautiful for themselves or for their community, please let me know. My email address is conectadiosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you. Until then, stay connected, everybody.